No, I didn't ask my shrink. Because he gets some exorbitant sum of money every week to talk to me so that David doesn't have to. He's not going to advise me to follow my dreams. Yes, I have dreams, Carol. I don't know what they are anymore. That's why I have to leave. Look, Carol, you're my goddamn sister. I shouldn't have to justify myself to you. Just change the motherfucking sheets. Carol, my wayward daughter just came home. You may be off the hook. I'll call you later. You can't say that. I'm your sister. Where the hell have you been? Are we still packing or are we done? I was worried sick. Oh my if God. We're done, I have to get back. I know that face. I need to go home. You just got laid. Uh, I need to beat the traffic. That's your I just got laid face. And you have a remarkable amount of unpacking to do before daddy gets back. That's the face you used to make in high school. I never got laid in high school, mom. Oh, I knew what you and Billy Thebels were up to every time you went apple picking. We were apple picking. Uh, well, you know, you may be the only person who got laid last night in this entire town. You should be congratulated. Well, really, Billy should be congratulated. Tell me you didn't follow me. I didn't follow you. Then how did you know I spent the night with Billy? Oh, well, instead I utilized my highly rarefied system of specialized spy technology I like to call Operation Windows. So, how was he? Mom. Better than high school? I didn't sleep with him in high school. Why not? Because I wasn't supposed to. God, you never did anything you weren't supposed to. I mean, the whole reason I had a kid was to add a little excitement into my life. And instead, I got you. It was like raising my mother. I'm sorry things didn't work out for you the way you wanted them to, Mom. Save your sympathy. Wait your turn. So when's Dad coming back? A couple of hours. Do you want me to help you unpack now? I'm leaving him. Why? Because he's having an affair. You don't know that. I found underwear in his jacket pocket. Well, maybe somebody slipped them into his pocket at work as a practical joke to get him in trouble with his wife. You should at least ask him. <laughs> I'll be sure and ask him that from your place in New York. You've been married for 30 years. You owe him an explanation out of respect. For what? Time? For him. Hmm. Oh, him. No, let's go. Go. You're taking me to New York. No, I'm not. One of us has to be the responsible one in this circumstance, and as usual, it looks like it has to be me, so... Responsible for who? For Dad. And for you, for the sanctity of your union. For the sanctity of our... Oh my God, for the sanctity of our... The things that sound reasonable when you're 25. Give me one good reason why you should leave my father. And then you'll take me to New York? I'm tired of cooking. I'm leaving. You're staying. What? You said if I... That's not a good reason. Well, I think it is. Take the train then. I don't really... I'm not dead yet. What? There. That's two good reasons. I get a drive. Mom. Oh, marriage is a contract, Amanda. It's not a sacred union. And the reason I signed it, and the reason why you're going to sign it, is because when you're young, you think it's a good idea. Because... The world seems huge and foreign and full of rapists, and nobody takes you seriously. The trouble is, after you're buried, not only do they not take you seriously, they're not even curious anymore. But nobody tells you that. People take me seriously. I'm good at what I do. I told you that you could have everything, that you never had to compromise. My generation did all the compromises for you. Now, I feel bad about that. That's not something that I knew, per se. It was just something I was hoping would come true. Well, don't worry about me. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Not if you marry Jack Handel. Do you know how many girls would kill to marry Jack Handel? So let one of them. Not you. You go live a life. There are happily married women in the world, Mom. Just because you couldn't make it work doesn't mean that I I'm am a happily married woman. I'm telling you, it's a farce. Your kids will leave you. Your husband will leave you. It's, it's, it's natural. Everybody dies alone. <laughs>
But you, you have the opportunity to leave something truly extraordinary behind and you're throwing it all away before you've even tried. It's not that easy. I could do this my whole life and never get anywhere at it. And if I walk away from Jack, I will be walking away from an extraordinary life. No, Jack will have the extraordinary life. And because of that, he's gonna be difficult and demanding and, and his head will swell and, and he'll fuck around. And, and you'll stay home and raise his kids and worry about contracting herpes from your husband. When did you become such a bitch? I don't know. I don't know. It just happened. I woke up one morning and I had all these black hairs growing above my lip and I thought to myself, well, there goes your smile, little girl. You can either give up now or learn how to fight like a dog. It's not so bad, actually. I never did get anything I wanted with just a smile. Well, that, that's just menopause. It's totally normal. <laughs> it's wonderful. I mean, I am producing testosterone for the first time in my life. My head is so clear. Like, I, I want to do something with myself. I want to hunt for something and find it and break it. I want to build something huge and complex and ugly. I, I want to win an argument before I die using logic. I want to scream at someone and make them cry and feel good about it. This is really shitty timing, Kim. I think you know that. I think you planned it this way. We cannot both be housewives. If you marry Jack, I'm going to have to leave your father. One of us needs to live an extraordinary life. Are you crying? No. Oh, yes, you are. I don't feel good about that. Damn, God, what is the matter with me? Shit. If it will make you feel better, I won't leave your father until after you marry Jack. That doesn't make me feel better. It's a good offer, you should take it. Why are you taking that painting? Is it worth something? I just like it. It looks vaguely famous. No. It's just sentimental. It's worthless. Have you ever had it appraised? No. Where'd you get it? I painted it. What? Yeah, I painted it. I mean, that, you don't have to believe me. I understand. Is that you? Yes. How old were you? Uh, young. Your age. I thought you worked at an art gallery when you were my age. I did. You mean you sold your work at an art gallery? Right. You never told me that. Well, you never asked. Why the hell did you give it up? This is really good. Well, I mean, it all seemed a little silly after a while. I, I had a child and a husband. You know, what was I supposed to do? Put you down in front of the TV so I could go paint? What kind of mother does that? <laughs> well, I knew I'd never paint anything as beautiful as you. <laughs> Do you really think I'm making a huge mistake? I just, it's not the choice I would make if I had to do it over again. What would you do instead? Hmm. I would take an easel to a mountain somewhere, set it up on the edge of a cliff, mix my paints, stare at the horizon and try to live forever. Where are you going? Well, since we've decided I'm not leaving your father tonight, I'm going upstairs. Desperate Housewives is on Hulu. What should I do now? What do you want to do, sweetheart? Just disappear. And I just want to be seen. 
See? It's rigged.